Hi, my name is Saif. I'm founder and managing partner of the Python Quants Group. Among others, we provide datapark.io, which uh, gives you the most powerful open source data science technologies by simply using the browser. We also organize in, in cooperation with the CQF Institutes, the For Python Quants conference. The next one will take place at the end of November in London. Check out also our books, Python for Finance, published by O'Reilly, and Derivatives Analytics with Python, published by Wiley Finance. Today's tutorial about deploying Python for data analytics and the Jupyter Notebook in the cloud um, is based on this particular GitHub repository, which you find in my account. The repository is called Cloud Python. Before we clone the repository and use the single scripts that are in there, we need to fire up a droplet. I use DigitalOcean. If you don't have an account yet, just look up the repository. There you find a link, which also provides a 10 US dollar bonus if you sign up via this particular link. I call my droplet Cloud Python, like the repository. I choose the option with the two CPUs and two gigs of RAM. As a region, I choose London. You can, of course, choose another one. I use the default for the operating system, Ubuntu, which works pretty well. And for convenience, I'm also adding a SSH key. Now let us create the droplet. Typically, this should take roughly one minute. Now let us go to the command line and clone the repository from GitHub. This only takes a few seconds. Let's navigate to the just cloned repository. Here you see there are a few bash scripts in there and also a few uh, notebooks. Uh, and also a folder which contains a few more files which represent together a Flask-based web application. This is what we want to use. Before we can start, we need the IP address of the just created droplet. This should take uh, only a few seconds more. Um, and after we have the IP address, we can set up the server by using the script from the repository. This will copy uh, the files that we need to the server and will execute another bash script on the server, which then in turn installs Python, uh, Jupyter Notebook, uh, a few more packages from the scientific Python stack, and in the end will set up a uh, Jupyter Notebook server, which we can use via the browser. Should take only a few seconds more. Here you see the, the bar progressing. And now we are finished. And we get the information that we need. Here you see the IP address in the upper left corner. We copy this. Go back to the uh, shell. And now what we do is to execute the script which is called setup underscore server dot sh. And we paste in here the IP address of the just created droplet. Say yes to confirm the new IP address. And you see that the uh, needed files get copied to the server and another bash script is executed on the server. This will install everything like uh, the Python interpreter, the version 2.7, and in addition, using Miniconda from Continuum Analytics, a few more libraries that we need. Once the script is finished, it will fire up the Jupyter Notebook server. The Jupyter Notebook server can be reached under the same IP address. We can prepare this already by copying in the IP address and the port under which the Jupyter Notebook server will be served is 8888. But let us check back how our script is progressing. Here you see that quite a number of uh, Python packages and libraries is downloaded and installed. I see the single steps here how it progresses. Among others, we install matplotlib, pandas, but also the Plotly plotting engine for easily generating interactive D3 GS graphics. Usually you only need kind of a uh, single line of code only, 
but you nevertheless get nice looking interactive D3 plots. We are also installing cufflinks, which is a binder for the Plotly uh, plotting engine uh, and pandas. So plotting data stored in pandas data frame objects is made pretty easy by using cufflinks. So let us see, this is progressing well. And once the script is finished and the Jupyter Notebook server is fired up, we will have available four different Jupyter Notebooks that we can use. They illustrate different use cases all around finance and data analytics. Among others, I will show you shortly also how to use uh, IPython Parallel to implement parallel computations. Uh, remember, we have available a droplet with two cores and we will make use of these two, two cores shortly. Now SciPy gets installed. SciPy is kind of the scientific backbone. It provides a wealth of functions that you need in different scientific areas. And now we should be close to the finishing line. And the finishing line in this case represents the firing up of the Jupyter Notebook server. And here you see that it's now up and running. Let us go back to the browser. And now, here we go. You see our Jupyter Notebook server running now on the just created uh, droplet. Let us start with a rather simple example. This uh, Jupyter Notebook illustrates how to retrieve data from the Quandl open data platform and how to visualize this. In our case, we will uh, visualize data for Bitcoin. So let us just execute all the cells. And you see now that uh, cell after cell is executed. Here you see already the first plot, which shows the number of Bitcoins in existence over time. Um, and here you see also the historical Bitcoin rate with a spike uh, almost close to 1200. And also the total volume uh, of Bitcoins traded of the Bitcoin transactions. Very simple. Check it out by yourself. The next uh, thing I want to uh, illustrate is interactive widgets in Jupyter Notebook. This is pretty nice because you can very easily build something that is pretty close to a regular application, but it's still here developed and used in interactive mode. So once again, executing all the cells in this uh, notebook, which is called interactive widgets, provides you in the end a few examples of how to use these. For example, here using the slider, this widget, you see that the corresponding graphic changes in real time. This not only works in 2D, this works in 3D as well. And you see doing the same thing, changing the sigma. You see how the plot adjusts in almost real time. The next example shows how pandas, plotly and cufflinks nicely interact. Again, I execute simply all the cells. What it does is to read historical time series data for Apple, Microsoft, Yahoo, and Facebook. Here you see the most recently available data. And it plots the data sets by the use of pandas, cufflinks, and the Plotly plotting engine. And you see that the result is really interactive. You have here a D3GS graphic. And you can hover over the data, or you can, for example, zoom in. A double click brings us back to the original view. The same holds true, for example, for histograms. Here we see uh, four different histograms, each one showing um, the uh, frequency distribution for the returns of the single time series that we have. Very simple, very easy. And note that we only need a single line of code to generate these nice looking interactive plots. The next example is a little bit more involved. It shows you how to use IPython parallel. To this end, I first fire up a cluster, a small cluster. We only have two cores, but we want to use them. So I start a uh, cluster here with two engines. I then first open a terminal, which we have available. and use htop 
to monitor system activity and here you see indeed that we have two cores available. This is where we want to have a look at when we execute the script. So I open I Python parallel and again I simply execute all the cells. First why I'm on the color simulation, a few option prices are calculated sequentially. This is what is going on here. Once this sequential calculation is finished, the parallel evaluation takes place. And we'll then have a look if we indeed have a parallel evaluation. So we now go here and you see indeed we have 100% utilization of our two cores by using IPython parallel. Given this, we would expect a speed up. Let us check back and go at the end of the Jupyter Notebook. See the results from the parallel calculation. And here we see the result. And indeed, we reached roughly a speed up of 50%. The parallel calculation takes only 50% of the time that is needed to um, do the sequential calculation. Pretty impressive and pretty simple. It's very easy to use and very helpful in many circumstances. The last thing I want to show you is how to deploy a Flask app, um, the code of which has been copied during the setup procedure. And let us have a look at our current, current working directory. And you see one additional subfolder here. This is uh, called stock underscore int. If we navigate to that and have a look, you see that we have uh, two Python scripts, two more subfolders. One is called templates, the other static. Uh, those of you who are used to using Flask uh, know that this is kind of a typical structure. And what we want to do is to execute the script called stock underscore interactive. And we let it run in the background. And here you see that this particular application is now available on port 777. So once again, we need the IP address of our droplet. And we then go to port 777. And here we go. We see now our flask based application which we have just deployed. Uh, this application allows the following. It allows to retrieve uh, historical stock price data from Yahoo Finance. and allows you to define two different trends. I choose 50 day and 250 days. And once I push the submit button, data will be retrieved in the back and will be displayed again using Plotly to generate nice interactive D3GS. Uh, graphics. And here we see that we have the original historical time series as the blue line and we have the two trends, the 50 day trend and the 252 uh, day trend plotted here. On the bottom of this results page you see again the most recently available data uh, here in this case again for the last five days actually. That's already it. What we have seen today is that it's pretty easy to deploy Python and Jupyter Notebooks in the cloud. And actually what we have done is to do this in real time. It only takes a few minutes and you have your basic Python scientific stack available. You have your interactive analytics environment in the form of Jupyter Notebooks. But you have also available, for example, the shell, via which you can do a, a resource monitoring using HTOP, for example. And the final thing that we have uh, covered today is the deployment of a simple Flask-based web application. And again, this is all done in the cloud pretty easily. We have fired up Droplet, we have uh, copied uh, things on the server, we have run a bash script, and we were ready to use. And that's it for today from my side. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this tutorial go to the github repo and you can use everything that you have seen today for yourself My name is Eve. I'm managing partner and founder of the Python Quants group and I hope to speak to you soon. Thanks